Couscous is home. She has her tabernacle, hinged tabernacle ready to go. We saw that in the last episode. And what I'm gonna do is make a mast crutch with some leftover wood from the woodshed. And then I'm gonna make a device to anchor it right in here where, where the rudder goes through. All right, so that just to give it a little bit of a lift. I mean, the mast is light enough. I could lift it all single-handedly. However, um, this little mast crutch will, will also help with transporting and just give it a little bit of a hold. I could buy a, a mast crutch that's ready to go. They do sell them online, but I like using what I have and I like make, uh, making use of resources such as this old piece of wood here this old piece of two by four that was part of the frame to cover my boat solitude repurpose it let's see how it comes out by the way if you watched my video when i picked up the tabernacle and mast from um, dean Marine, rudy had a painter's ladder set up in the back of the boat to use to kind of serve as a mast crutch so that's a small six foot one that's easy to go in the back of the pickup. So it's an option. I'm gonna cut some spacers for the, the little bolts that are gonna go into the, um, the rest for the tiller. So I marked out already where the attachments will be. Um, and trust me, this is not meant to be a fully finished, beautiful looking piece of mass crutch, but just something quick and easy to put together, reusing supplies that I already have on hand. So basically this is going to go into the um, holder for the rudder. If I do it right, then it should it should fit right in. I think that's where the spacer needs to be. I'll have my mast holder up higher, like right here. There you go. That's what I was talking about. Now I gotta put all my halyards on and uh, get it ready. We have this line here that goes into the cockpit where I'll be standing. Feed it through the shackle where the next to where the four stay connects. Four stay is going to hook up right here, and I'm going to tie it to the tabernacle, and that way I can stand and pull, and it'll give me some forward leverage. All right, making sure there's no tangles. Then I'm going to take this turnbuckle, put it, pin it down. I already uh, pinned down the other shroud turnbuckle. Obviously, the four stay is not pinned yet because that's got to still push forward so let's get this pin in here all right it's already been it's already loose and now we're going to pin the mast the first attempt to raise was a fail because the mast was touching the tree just above that ladder so i had to move the boat forward yeah now we have clearance we'll lock the wheels and we'll give her a go All right, so I have the line that's tied to my forestay, and it just helps me to guide and get some leverage going forward. Although the mast is light enough that I could just do it without that, but this gives it some extra safety so that the mast doesn't come down on you. Then I secure the mast in place using the cleat on the cabin top. I gave the line a little bit of a slack, that way I can put the pin in easily. For added measure, I held on to the mast with one hand. There goes the pin. Yep, 
In case you're wondering, to lower it, you just move the pin that's forward, keep the one that's aft in place, grab your line, and just do everything in reverse, nice and gently, so you don't slam your mask down. Now it's time to tension the rigging, adjusting the turnbuckles on the side stays, and that is after already tightening up the four stay turnbuckle. I'm gonna try to balance it out. If you pull too far on one side, you won't be able to pull as far on the other side and your mask could have a list to it. It's not going anywhere. Now I gotta put the boom up. Let's roll. Dope. We didn't need that. Yes, we did. That was one of the blocks for the main sheet. It just wasn't locked in place. It slides back on and locks in place. That's where we are so far. Got the running rigging up. I just need to put up the sails. All right, let's speed it up a little bit just for the sake of time. The head sail's already clipped on. It's a yank on head sail. And now we're gonna put up the main. Just imagine doing this by the water with the wind blowing. You wanna make sure the sail is Nice and neat, not like uh, the way things are looking right here on the, in the yard. I can get away with that here, but getting ready to launch, you wanna have the sail nice and neat out of the salt water or out of the lake water. This way you can just easily hoist it, easily set it, easily hoist it. So I'm gonna tighten up the clue of that sail. This will make the foot of the sail look nice and stiff. Now we're gonna connect the, the head sail to the main halyard and feed it right through the groove on the mast and pull it up as we go. Now that the main sheet's up, we're gonna secure the main halyard to the cleat on the cabin top. All right, so the jib has these clips that clip on. Clipped on the bottom also. We got the uh, jib halyard set up. Double check and make sure I didn't put any tangles on there. Find the clue of it. The sail is pretty vintage. And so voila. Just like that, we're ready to go. There we go. 
That looks a little bit more like what I was going for. That's the tie for the sheets. That head sheet tie is called a lark's head. All right, let's hoist that jib. If we did everything right, she should go up. Now I'm securing the jib halyard to the cabin top cleat. The only thing left to do is to pull the sheet to the wind and start yard sailing. She's almost ready to be splashed. I need to make sure the center board is working well. And there's a couple of spots that need to be addressed with fiberglass. And once that's done, then I'll be able to launch her. The rest of the cosmetics, paint job, bottom paint, all of that, the woodwork, um, I'll be able to do over the winter. So she'll look good in the spring. The next job will be attaching the tiller handle to the rudder. I'll need to get a bracket for it, bolts for it, do some drilling, and then we'll be good to go. So in terms of the sheet, should my sheet come through and tie there, or the way we have it now, skipping that and going straight back to this rear cleat. What are your thoughts? How do you tie yours? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.